Let's do our next example. For this one, we have 4x squared minus 1. So the 4 are not so important. I mean, it is, but as far as establishing our pattern, the x squared minus 1 corresponds to secant, right? If we look at the derivatives. So what we should do is we should let, all right, so we want x to be, all right, so we want x to be something in terms of secant. Now we want to get rid of the 4, so what we'll do is we'll let x equal 1 half secant theta, okay? Because that means that if I do x squared, 4x squared minus 1, okay? Well, that's going to be 4 times a quarter. It's going to be secant squared theta minus 1. And that's going to be 10 squared theta. Good. Okay. So that means that the absolute value of 4x squared minus, or sorry, the square root of 4x squared minus 1 is, well, here's, here's the, the thing. Technically, I should put absolute value of 10 theta there because what I'm saying here is that theta, right, so theta is defined as arc secant of, of, of 2x. That's the definition I'm going for here. Um, so if we, if we use this sort of trig-friendly definition for arc secant, where arc secant takes values in the first and the second quadrants, right, um, well, if theta is in the second quadrant, then 10 theta is negative, right? So 10 theta cannot be a square root. Um, so that means, so there's kind of two, two ways to get around this. Either you have to put the absolute value in there, or you have to hope that you're working on an interval where, where you know, x is positive. If x is negative, then, then there's going to be trouble. Of course, we're just looking for an antiderivative. So we, if, if we can get to the answer in the end and we sort of bypass things and, and that absolute value turns out not to matter, then maybe it's okay. Um, but, you know, it's, it's something that maybe we should worry a little bit about in the meantime. So this is why sometimes other textbooks will, will say that arc secant takes values in quadrants 1 and 3 because then tan is positive and we don't have to worry about this. But moving on. So 4x squared minus 1 under the square root, that gives us 10 with or without the absolute value, depending on your philosophies on these things. Uh, dx, dx is 1 half secant theta, tan theta, d theta, right? Okay. Let's put it all together. Let's... Ignore the absolute, drop the absolute value, we'll, we'll sort it out in the end if we have to. So the square root becomes tan theta, uh, dx becomes one half tan theta, secant theta, d theta. Okay, so what does that give us? That gives us one half integral of tan squared theta secant theta d theta and guess what uh, even power of 10 odd power of secant that's one of the ones that's maybe not our friend the only way to tackle this is to say okay tan squared is secant squared theta minus 1 and there's secant theta d theta so this becomes 1 half times the integral of secant cubed theta minus secant theta. And okay, now we have to think back. We did that not so long ago. We did the integral of secant cubed. We got to think back, see if we can remember it. Um, I think I can remember it. So I'm pretty sure. This is what we had. Secant cubed theta came out to be 1 half secant theta tan theta plus 1 half the natural log secant theta plus tan theta. I think that's right. OK, 
Okay. So we get one quarter secant theta tan theta. Uh, multiplying by this half, right? Um, now, I'm going to get, so inside here, right, I'm going to get, for, for this integral, right, I'm going to get uh, one half of this, this log, but then I'm going to get uh, minus that. So I actually get minus a quarter, simplifying as I go, right? Saves on my marker budget. These things are not cheap, okay? So minus a quarter because I'm going to get, I'm going to get, plus a quarter when I do this integral, I'm going to get minus a half, that same log when I do that integral, quarter minus a half gives me minus one quarter. Gets me to there, okay? All right, now we got to substitute back secant theta. Secant theta is equal to 2x. So this becomes one quarter times 2x. Tan theta, again, we, we agreed we're going we're gonna to ignore that absolute value, right? Sure, why not? So this becomes square root 4x squared minus 1, okay, minus 1 quarter times the natural log, absolute value, 2x plus the square root 4x squared minus 1 plus c. Okay. So we get an answer. We can clean it up, a, but, you know, leave it there. We don't want the video to go on too long. Uh, of course, you can, if you want to check your answer, you can take the derivative and see if you get back to what you're supposed to get back to. With a little bit of work, you should get it, right? Um, yeah, it'll be a bit of a mess, but it's doable. Uh, okay, um, this is illustrative of a lot of the ones that exhibit this last pattern. Um, depending on your definitions, you might have to worry about sign ambiguities or just sweep it under the rug. Um, but also, uh, when you're doing secant substitutions, you tend to end up with integrals, trig integrals, that are not particularly nice to deal with. Um, Later on, we're going to see that actually there's a better way to do some of these. Rather than doing a secant substitution, you can do substitutions using hyperbolic functions. Um, we haven't introduced the hyperbolic functions yet. Once we do, uh, we'll see that hyperbolic functions are, are kind of analogous to trig functions in certain ways. They satisfy a lot of the same types of identities that trig functions satisfy. And sometimes hyperbolic functions are better candidates for a substitution in a setting like this than a, than a trig function. Um, We'll see those later on in a, in a few sections from now.